Yeah, and so if you have a if you have a beehive, you want to be careful, of course. You hear that? You hear them humming inside? Yeah, I can. Yeah, they are redistributing the air to keep the babies warm. So they're so like when it's really hot outside, like it has been. Um, they uh, go and get droplets of water. And then they place the water in, uh, um, place the water in um, such strategic areas. And then they do the same thing to water cool the hive. They'll keep it at 98 degrees all the time. That is the most important thing that happens in the hive is incubation. That's why when you mess with the beehive, the centurions come out to talk to you. <laughs> they, they're saying, don't mess with our babies. That's all they're doing is trying to protect their babies inside. Do they have a like season for reproduction, or is it kind of a continuous thing? It's all the time. Now, at different times, at different times, uh, there's more laying going on. Like right now, we're beyond the summer solstice. And our days are getting shorter now. That happened about the third week of June, first week of uh, July, I can't remember. Uh, at any rate, beyond that, then the sun starts going the other direction, and our days begin to get shorter. When that takes place, uh, um, the queen will begin to slow down in her lane. It's, not, it's nothing that you can really notice because she's very gradual, organic. Again, natural for the queen to, to do that. Um, also, the reason why they put this up here, they're going to have to redo it because I've taken it off because I harvest it. And I'll make them redo that. And uh, um, because what it does is they're uh, circulating the air. All of these little things are to help move the air where they want it to go. And now I, I know inside here, and this is all honey, as I remember. I could be wrong. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean these here off. And this is part of your, of your bee inspection, your beehive inspection. Cleaning these frames off of all the stuff. How often do you clean the stuff? Or if you were to every, own your own hive, how often would you expect to do Every two weeks we need to do a hive inspection. The reason why it's every two weeks is because the life cycle of a bee is 21 days or three weeks. That way uh, you do not miss a life cycle in your inspection. And you're always ahead of your inspection. And if you can do that, and you understand what you're looking for, then you can head off problems before they become too big and you lose your hive. So every two weeks, we need to open a hive. Now, the difference between a new beekeeper and this hive, it's been three weeks since I've been into this hive. But I'm here every other day, and I see this hive, and I've been a beekeeper for 45 years. Yep. So, just by the smell of the hive, interacting at the front door, talks to me a lot, and, and because of my experience, I'm able to tell you this hive is doing great. Uh, when I see certain things like uh, maybe some, uh, um, oh, I, like I was looking at this just the other day, I see the little spots, and I wanted to make sure that that wasn't a virus. Bees get a cold. Uh, and I, what I realized is that it's not bee poop, it's actually uh, wax. So somehow some wax got on there and melted in the sun, but it looked like a nasima is the name of the flu that bees get. And they take an antibiotic for it and they get well. Um, okay, so I'm going to start over here. This is another thing they do. You see where this part of a dead bee is? They'll use the propolis to encase, to protect the hive from any bacteria from the dead bee. That pretty honey. That's pretty. That pretty. I got ten frames of that right here. And so we will probably take this whole box of honey. Today. Let's right. take 
from the flowers and then bring that nectar into the hive and then a little gland just next to the brain of the bee releases the enzymes into the nectar that now is honey. That's what makes it. So they just about have this one finished. So I'm anticipating a really good result. And they make that uh, Escon shape themselves, right? That's correct. Now we do, uh, this has, we, these frames have a, what I put in them is called foundation. And that foundation is made of 100% beeswax. Okay. It goes through a machine and it embosses a hexagon for them. And, and it's a uh, 4.89 uh, millimeter, uh, which is the average size of the normal bee. Uh, and what it does is give them a head start. And it knocks off about two to three weeks of what if let's say I didn't put any foundation and they had to do it organically uh -huh. through their own bodies. Um, what could happen then is it's going to take about, as opposed to one week, it's going to take three weeks. It takes three times the energy for them to make wax as it does for them. So if you see uh, these uh, 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 cut cone honey, which we do sell, we're actually we're getting ready to cut cone honey right now. And uh, again, this has been in here three weeks. I'm hoping to see some baby bees. The queen's got up here and laid. So you said that you avoid agriculture, so you avoid farm. Why did you? decide or why did the zoo decide to put some bees out here? Well, because the zoo is organic. They use no pesticides. They, know, they don't use herbicides. Uh, they're fenced in. I don't have to worry about my bees being stolen. Uh, and uh, just, you know, I've just been a beekeeper here for so long. I knew Shanae. She took one of the classes that I offered through the city of Wichita. Uh -huh. It's a 10 week course. It's just in the books. And then uh, because of that, and uh, she's helped me or extended the offer to me to bring my bees out here and be able to show people bees. Sedgwick County wants to do something for bees. I mean, bees, the federal government hasn't declared that bees are in danger. Uh -huh. uh, but I can tell you as a beekeeper, they are in danger. Uh, I lose everything I do is to help bees survive, and it seems... Uh, that it is becoming more difficult all the time, especially in big groups. Of, you know, when you keep 100 hives and you lose 35 or 45 of your hives. Uh, now, that was two, three years ago, and then I got it down to 35 out of 100. And uh, I believe this year we'll even do better. Uh, and, uh, and the whole thing I've been targeting over the past three years is how to... Uh, get bees nutrients. Uh -huh. uh, when I find the majority of the beehives that I lose from the winter time, I will find them in the hive with their with them sticking out of the holes, with their little fannies sticking out of the holes there, where there's honey, and they starve to death. How can bees starve to death when they have honey? Right. Right. And so. Uh, what we have started to do is to supplement them with organic um, stuff like uh, um, sorghum. So uh, when we hit the 1st of September, uh, I will be feeding these bees sorghum because sorghum is so full of nutrients and vitamins and minerals and, and what bees need to make it through that winter. Uh, so basically I feel like, because I've tried everything, and the only thing that's made any improvement was as I focused on their nutrition. Uh, so uh, staying away from fields that the silkworm doesn't even go to anymore. You go buy that nice corn at the at the store, and there's not a silkworm eating it nowhere. And my bees, when I take them to cornfields, they fly away. It's not corn anymore. It looks like corn, smells like corn, tastes like corn, but they don't think it is. So anyway. Uh, is that what's in the jars, or is the jars just water? The jars. Oh, no, no, no. 
and I'm going to put them back in there the best I can to see how I found them. They have a method to what they're doing. So when you take them out, you want to put them back in the way they came out. And I'm not seeing the queen or eggs. There's no point to check the last one over there. The queen will lay on these, either one. These are referred to as insulator frames. And if you come up a little closer, you're going to hear the bees begin to show up. afternoon or tomorrow I'll be out here to collect this next box out. It'll go to the house and we'll extract it and bring it back and put it on. They'll clean it all up and start filling it up again. Oh, nice. What do they do in the meantime when they don't have the um, the frames? Or do you leave the frames? Well, we'll take the whole box out. Oh, okay. And then extract it and then bring it back. It's just when I have a uh, if I have an extra box, I can brush the bees down into the hive, uh -huh. and then take the frame of honey over and put it into a separate box. Got it. Yeah. And then that way I'm not giving them a hard time. What this is for is the high UV. This was a recovering hive that became sick. And some happened to the queen, I don't remember for sure. And when that high UV uh, hits, I'll send you some pictures. Uh, the surface, it's a surface te temperature. It creates a surface temperature. Our normal high UV ultraviolet is uh, seven, maybe eight at the most. Mm -hmm. If you do some history, you'll see that, that that's normally what it is. Uh, I started keeping track of our high UV hitting uh, starting the uh, uh, second the third week of June. And 11s. That is Phoenix, Arizona. I lived in Phoenix for three years. We always kept our eye on the UV. Um, and so our UV, probably 60 days, we probably had, let's see, we had June, July, and now we're in August. We've had at least 40 days, I guess. Uh, middle of June, last two weeks of June, July, and August. We're in our first week of August. Yeah, it feels like it's a <laughs> Right? I had a block of wax, like you see right here, a block of this wax, setting on some styrofoam that I've had made into um, covers that go over my beehives to keep them dry in the winter. So, um, at any rate, I set that block of wax down in UV. It was 98 that day, so it was hot. But then we had an, almost an 11 UV. And I went out to find my wax. And it melted and ran uh, off. Well, bees wax melts at 140 degrees. So that's how hot it had to be yeah. in order for it to melt. So surface temperatures with high UV is, is what we want to avoid. And so by putting a, a, this up here, this gets hot and this doesn't. And so I found that to help all my high melt. I only have them on, I only have these on the wheat hives because I ran out of plates. plates. But I'm looking, this here was a sick hive. So let's see how our new queen is doing. So did you have to replace her? Yep. How, do you like, like find and buy a queen you or? Can buy a queen, yes. Okay. So each hive only has one queen, correct? Right. Um, when does when does a new queen get born, or how do you find the new queen? Well, if 
if you have one purchased, you can, uh, most places, you can uh, purchase a, um, a breed that you want to eat. You can pre uh, purchase a, uh, uh, a Russian queen. You can buy a uh, Starline style of bee. Since there's food and everything in this, <laughs> I'm going to slide this one in between. And I'm going to put it right here. Yes. 
we uh, clean it, we, we heat it up to, I think it melts at about 140. <coughs> we try not to uh, uh, melt it at all and just keep it in a warm hot bath about 105 degrees and let it slowly go through a net and that way you don't kill enzymes. <coughs> If you get up uh, in honey, there's nine different yeasts. Uh, per tablespoon of honey, you get uh, about a million enzymes and, and, and a reasonable amount of these nine yeasts. Uh, when, if I sold my honey to uh, Kansas honey producers out in Heston, uh, they heat it up to 160, pasteurize it, about a half to. Uh -huh. And then they mix it with whatever, and then it goes to our grocery stores. I mean, Dillon's and Walmart, they don't have beehives, right? That's where they get it. But right. it has to be pasteurized. It's real honey, but it's been heated up. And I don't know that all of those enzymes and yeast are dead, but after 160 degrees, I would imagine that at least the yeast are. I mean, the vitamins and minerals that are in there, which are uh, bees and zinc and... Phosphorus, some other good things in honey that uh, you know you can still get the benefit from. But supporting your local beekeeper, the person that has a couple of beehives in their backyard, uh, pay them twenty dollars for a pound and a half of really good honey from your backyard, from your neighborhood. Nothing like it. I mean, it's like buying that pair at the store that's still hard and you have to wait for it to get done by picking it off the tree and eating There's right, there's no doubt. You, <laughs> which one do you want? Right, yeah. Right, I'm gonna take the one off the tree <laughs> every time. And uh you know trees are like that too. Um some of these trees when they're pollinating and producing uh, uh they can produce anything Calskin Creek. We have about a quarter mile of black locust trees. We drop 40 hives in there, 2 million bees. And uh, it can produce right about 2,000 pounds of honey in 15 to 17 days. Wow. Right. That's awesome. That's a lot. Yeah. yeah. So, I'm going to tell you that uh, I recommend a class to anybody that wants to be a beekeeper. Just so you can identify all the things like Nasima, mites, small hive beetles, wax moths, and then what do you do about some of the behaviors of bees? As well as you're going to need to be a little bit of a botanist. So, because Milo has been uh, GMO, because uh, wheat has been changed, it's been GMO, our, our soybeans and our I was raised on a farm, and I remember when we would go out to the field when the soybean was in full bloom, and the pots were there. And by the time it was done, and the corn was done, and everything else, and we're talking about 1974, okay, so uh, then he, uh, hybrid was just coming out, you know, so <laughs> By the time it was done, we had another box of honey. And today, I get no boxes of honey in my bees anymore. So, uh, if the insects won't eat it, then uh, you probably ought to think about whether you ought to eat it. Makes sense. So, uh, anyway, uh, I'll be taking questions and, uh, and uh, ask anything you like. I'll try and answer it. If I don't know, I'll get the answer for you. Awesome. Thank you so much.